Good evening. I'm Assembly Member Marcos Crespo. Let me first thank Remy Trafalet and all the board members of the Children's Scholarship Fund for this prestigious honor. I also want to congratulate my fellow honoree, Mr. Lou Ranieri, for his tremendous efforts through the Tomorrow's Hope Foundation in making sure that children across this state and across the country have an opportunity at a quality education. You know, I'm the second co-sponsor of the Education Investment Tax Credit here in New York. And, and I have never felt more proud of my support for a piece of legislation than with this one. And I'll tell you why. You know, last month, uh, I spent some time listening to some of the CSF children and families, the parents, and talked to them a little bit about their experience. I've had the same conversation here in my district at the many schools that provide opportunities uh, to children who are able to go to these great parochial schools because of this scholarship. I've talked to families who don't have this opportunity, who tell me about the great concern they have for their children's education. And I have also lived this myself. You know, when I met my wife and my stepdaughter was only five years old, six years old, she was in an elementary school in the Bronx that unfortunately was failing. It had been failing for years. And my stepdaughter was no different. She was far behind. My wife kept asking for assistance from the school and always denied that there wasn't enough resources or opportunity. It wasn't until I got elected to state office and accompanied her to a meeting that all of a sudden the school offered her an after school program, two different tutors, and a number of other opportunities that should have been offered the first day she asked for that assistance. That's not the story in every school, but it's far too common in our communities. That's one of the reasons why I believe that our children should not suffer the problems of policymakers. The fact that parents are desperate for opportunities, but unfortunately many of them cannot afford to offer that to their children. I was blessed that between my wife and I, we could make the financial sacrifice to take my daughter out of this failing public school and put her in a parochial school in the community. You gotta understand too, this was a Catholic school she went to, even though my mother-in-law is a Pentecostal minister. So religious instruction led to a lot of conversations at home. But what was most important was the quality of the education. It only took one year for my stepdaughter to catch up three grade levels. Today, she's an honor roll student at Preston High School in the Bronx. She's doing great work academically and in other ways, and I couldn't be more proud of her. And I had to apologize to my wife that I had started to believe the things that were said about her inability to learn, her learning disability, as an IEP told us, and all of the other things that we see day in and day out in our neighborhoods, that I just assumed that everything was true and that my stepdaughter just could not do better. I regret that, and I don't want to regret it in the future. And I certainly don't want to deny those opportunities to other families. That is why I'm proud of my support for this bill. Education shouldn't be a partisan issue. Education shouldn't be about you know, this, this group of leaders or this group of leaders or this interest versus that interest. Education should be simple. It's about children who don't have the luxury of time to wait for everybody else to get it right. It should be about parents being able to dictate what is best for their kids. You know, the state of New York, we pride ourselves in being a progressive capital of the nation. We talk about all of the innovative ideas that have come out of this state, but we can't seem to get education right. And while we fight and point the fingers at this school versus that school or this system versus that system, children are being lost along the way to systemic failure. Now, I don't blame any one person in particular, any one group. What I do believe is that we have to create opportunities and we can't fund those opportunities without the right resources. That is why I'm grateful to all of the individuals and donors who invest in programs like the Children's Scholarship Fund or Tomorrow's Hope Foundation and so many of the other great networks that provide children of low-income families the ability to pick a tool of choice where they will get a quality education and an opportunity at success. That is what we should be doing as a state, and that is why I'm proud of my support for the Education Investment Tax Credit. Let's create opportunities. Let's put politics aside and make a real investment in our children. And let's give parents who know their kids better than any bureaucrat will ever know the ability to dictate what is best for their kid and what school will offer them that great opportunity. So thank you for this award. Thank you for this recognition. I will continue to fight. And I hope that my colleagues understand that what we're fighting for is only so that every child in every community of all income means have the opportunity to be as successful and even more successful than we the parents may have been. Isn't that what we all want? Just to make sure that the next generation has it that much easier and does that much better than we did? I think we all share that sentiment and it can't be made possible without organizations like yours. So to all of you in the room, to all of the students, 
I dare you to be great. I dare you to challenge the stigmas associated with all of the things that grown-ups talked about. Just put all of that aside and be amazing. Be great. Change the world. But never forget to look back and help someone else who needs you. God bless you and thank you for this award.